The human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, has now afflicted the world. It essentially is believed that it originated in sub-Saharan Africa, largely in West Africa Niger and northern Nigeria. The virus is extremely complicated. It acts upon the human immune system in a specific way. It attaches to the body's own, the, the, the cells in the body um, that are key to defending the body from external infection. These are called T cells. The job of T cells is to look through the body to find bacteria or viruses or other foreign agents that could harm the body's physiology. The responsibility of these T cells is to target these, internalize these viruses, bacteria, or toxins, and destroy them. The human immunodeficiency virus enters the cell, enters the body, and then is cited by the T cell through specific proteins. The cell, recognizing the virus as a foreign invader, then internalizes the virus, and instead of consuming the virus, is itself destroyed. This is inherently the, the problem with HIV. Many drugs that are used to vaccinate human beings against the invasion of viruses use the body's own immune system as a means of defending them uh, against these foreign invaders. If the foreign invader in and of itself destroys the body's main machinery and self-defense, then inherently it's a disease that seem seemingly is uncurable using contemporary techniques for vaccine development. HIV has two main strains, HIV-1 and HIV-2. HIV-1 originated in, actually, the middle and the central portions of Western Africa, mainly north of present-day Cote d'Ivoire. The virus was uh, allegedly brought to North America um, via a, a single um, airline attendant, purportedly a single airline attendant, um, who was bisexual. The, therefore, a lot of the original strains of HIV that appeared in Canada and in the northern United States in the late 1970s were mainly spread amongst the homosexual community. Through, inter, through intercourse, primarily, and later, when through the uses of drugs and through the sharing of syringes, mainly in urban areas in the United States, and then spread um, through the metropolis on the east coast of the United States, from Boston to Washington, D.C., and then started to spread um, westward, and then eventually into California, where the largest number of AIDS cases actually exist per capita. HIV-1 is also spread throughout Europe, mainly afflicting the Mediterranean countries, Spain and France and Italy, and to a lesser extent, uh, Germany, England, and the Northern European countries. HIV-1 was misnomered originally the gay AIDS, so to speak, because it was originally spread through bisexual contact, mainly in the West. HIV-2 is a second and even deadlier strain that origi actually originated in Northern Nigeria and Zaire and has spread by no means, one really does not know how it was originally spread, but has found its largest home in South Asia, mainly in India, mainly in former French Indochina, where in Thailand, one in, one in four uh, Thai prostitutes is actually infected with HIV-2. HIV-2 has been misnomered the heterosexual AIDS because it has primarily been spread through, uh, through heterosexual contacts, through prostitution, um, um, and also... Um, through drug use, which is, is high um, in the more depressed areas of, of French and former French Indochina, Southeast Asia, India, and is slowly spreading into China, where it could possibly have disaster effect, disastrous effects on the human family. HIV-2 is more virulent because one of the main uh, proteins that the body's immune system uses to originally fight the first infection um, of AIDS, the original virus, the virus enters one's body, there's an original assault, on the um, virus when it enters the body, it is destroyed to a large extent, but then mutates. And one of its main, uh, main tags that allows the body to identify HIV mutates much more rapidly in the second strain, HIV-2, than HIV-1, making HIV-2 a much hairier problem for those who would design vaccines or devise drugs um, that destroy it. A lot of the AIDS effort has focused upon the development of vaccines. A lot of them have involved taking the genetic information from the virus and giving the patient just the virus alone. These vaccines have largely been unsuccessful for the reasons I have given originally, that the virus attacks the body's immune system using a vaccine 
to boost, so to speak, the already depleted immune system seems contrary to logic. More interesting examples using small chemicals, chemicals by the name of AZT and Taxol and others, have been slightly more successful in stemming the growth of viruses, particularly HIV-1, among Western patients who have received these drugs. The future of HIV research, both 1 and 2, must be pursued from a chemical level. It must also be pursued with equality. HIV-2 has largely been ignored because it afflicts largely third-world populations. The ability for large pharmaceutical companies, the only ones that have the resources to develop these potent new drugs, find no economic benefit in supplying very expensive high-technology uh, two third world nations afflicted with the second strain. The first strain, through the political agitation of groups, be they gay rights groups, um, uh, be they left liberal groups in the United States and in Europe, has pushed the drug industry to pay attention uh, to the AIDS problem. Eventually, I believe, the AIDS virus can only be conquered through a battery of small chemicals that can fundamentally destroy the virus's ability to mutate as so rapidly, its main weapon of evading the human immune system. Then, in combination with a well-developed vaccine, can we then destroy HIV and eliminate the scourge from the world.